Question 11a. There are three common mistakes I find from your mock practice. And let me explain why they are not correct or they are not perfect answer one by one. So the first mistake is about the income gap. So most of you know that with the word welfare. So the welfare program should be able to narrow the income gap, right? So this is pretty good. You have the correct answer. However, whenever, whenever this is about the income gap, income gap, then you should explain why the income gap is widened or narrowed. Then how you should, uh, how you can explain? You have to consider the low income group and also the high income group. So say for example, you say that well, maybe the low income group can receive the transfer payment, and so their disposable income increases. While the high income group can't receive any transfer payment, then the income gap can be leveled. This is uh, the strategy to explain how the income gap will be affected. Another reminder for you about the income gap is that most of you know that welfare programs could level the income gap. But very few of you know that when an economy develops into a tourism and financial center, the income gap would also be affected. Usually, if the economy develops into a financial center with tertiary production as the major production, then the income gap will be widened. Why? Because usually for financial sector and tourism sector, uh, sector they have the commission and also the bonus, right? And the commission and the bonus will vary a lot across the employees. And that's why usually if the major production is tertiary production, the income gap will be wider. Just like in Hong Kong, the income gap will be wider than other countries or economies with primary or secondary production as the major production. And uh, let me talk about the next mistake. The next mistake, some of you told me that hmm, the development project, of course, there should be investment by the government, right? And the AD increases, the output level increases. And this is pretty good. However, actually, this is not acceptable. Why this is not acceptable? Because there are two proposals, right? One is the development project. It will lead to an increase in the output level. But another uh, proposal is the welfare program, right? Welfare program, can it raise the AD and also the output level? Yes, it can also raise the AD because of the increase in the disposable income. And finally, why also increase? And then in that case, can you say that the increase in the Y is the advantage of one proposal over the other proposal? You can't say so, right? Because both of them has uh, have the same impact. And this is not the advantage of one of them over the other one. So that's why you can't use this as the answer. Then the last mistake uh, shown in your mock practices like this, so some of you told me that ah, with the development project, because it uh, develops into the tourism center, there will be more tourists in the future, right? Then this will affect the export of services in the future, and this will affect the invisible trade balance or even the balance of payment. Some of you think that hmm, an increase or the improvement of the balance of payment is something good. But actually, balance of payment or the trade uh, a balance would never be treated as an advantage or disadvantage. And you can't answer this type of question with argument for or argument against using balance of payment. You can't use this to answer. Let me explain why you can't use balance of payment to answer. Say for example, you assume that there is an increase in the net export so that the balance of payment improves then the increase in the net export may be resulted from an increase in the export, right? The export becomes relatively larger. Then we have a larger net export. So then in that case, what does it mean? It means that for our production, I export a relatively larger proportion of our production to foreigners, leaving behind a smaller amount of products to be consumed by ourselves. Then in that case, although we can sell more, 
but a larger amount of production is sold and consumed by the foreigners. That means our consumption, our living standard may be worse than before if the export becomes relatively larger. And that's why, can you say this is something good or bad? To the economy, finally, maybe uh, the aggregate demand will increase, GDP will increase. But to the people, maybe the living standard would worsen. And that's why I won't say this is something good or bad. We have something good, we have something bad from this increase in the net export. Similarly, for a decrease in net export, so say for example, when M becomes relatively larger, then net export will decrease, right? Then if you think about a decrease in net export, you may think that ah, oh, this will worsen the economy, the GDP, the AD will drop, right? Then this is something bad. However, if we import more, that means we can consume more. If we consume more, then our living standard is higher than before. Then in that case, we have something good as well from the increase in the import. And that's why I won't say that the uh, change in the trade balance or the balance of payment is something good or bad. Don't use this one to answer question for again, uh, argument for and also argument against.